Good evening, folks. This is Andy Pedraza with Special Effects Academy, and we're on the start of the week session in the Forex Training Room for May 3rd of 2020. We will be going through our standard agenda, our week results, our currency strength meter for the last week and month, any fundamental announcements on the calendar, especially any that we're going to be trading live, a look at the major pairs on the daily charts, any setups we see in progress, and a few words in conclusion. Starting with the ledger, our long-term ledger is up about 11% for the week, so we have quite a, quite a decent week in our realized gains. Of course, this is the long-term account, so a lot of these trades had been open for a uh, significant period of time. Some hadn't, and uh, we are trying this year to maintain a steady flow of trades in this account, so I am pretty much replacing trades as they close out, sometimes going back into the same trade in the same direction other times picking new trades, but uh, we did uh, exceed, as I said, 11% in realized gains uh, for the week, um, which is, uh, is quite good, and we've still got four trades open, all of them recently opened. Our intermediate term ledger is showing a negative performance uh, since the beginning of our fiscal year, but this week was an improvement. We did recover a few percentage points, and uh, we also opened a uh, nice uh, slew of trades. So we had uh, quite a active week, I should say, with uh, a lot of the pairs starting to move a little bit uh, more briskly than they had in the past. So I am expecting, as I've mentioned quite a few times, brilliant opportunities the remainder of this year, simply because of the situation affecting our global economy right now and, of course, the market. So looks like we're going to be in for a uh, very productive ride if things work out the way I think they will. On the uh, short-term account, we also picked up a, a few percentage points. We're up 2.5% for the week. We only had three trades. All of them were at profit. Well, the first one was pretty much break-even trade, but we did re-enter it in the same direction almost immediately and picked up uh, a few pips there. So again, not a huge week, but definitely a week in the right direction. Notes and opportunities for improvement. As I said, some movement this week. Oil seems to have bottomed out, so we have a new bottom for oil. We'll have to see if that level of support is uh, holds itself or if we're going to see another break. There's not much further down for it to go without hitting zero again, so we'll see what happens. But it does look like the worst is over for oil, and that will mean that it has a tremendous upside as the uh, global economy reacts. The United States is set to start reopening as of this week, depending on what state we're looking at. Some are reopening this week, some are holding off a week or two more. Uh, we did uh, realize uh, some nice gains in the long-term account, as we covered in the ledgers. Uh, and as I said, opportunities abound through end of year and will probably be very significant. The coronavirus is still the main thing weighing on the markets and the economy. And as I keep mentioning, we do have a live event in the works, which should have happened um, last week, actually. So we should have ended that event on Friday. It, of course, had to be postponed due to the coronavirus situation in Pennsylvania and globally. And we will be rescheduling as soon as we have some guidance as to uh, when things go back to whatever normal is going to look like after this event. Relative strength meter for the past 30 days and the past week. Um, volatility on the monthly is slightly down from 9% to 7%. We see that the Australian dollar has been the clear no Hold sparred winner for the past 30 days. So it's been a very, very good recovery from the Australian dollar. The Canadian has been a uh, loser in the same period, uh, mostly due to uh, well, coronavirus and oil. The Swiss has uh, been middle of the pack. The euro more towards the bottom. The pound has had a pretty nice recovery against everybody. It's the Australian and dollar and uh, Kiwi dollar. I'm sorry. The yen has had a um, bad month, except for the Canadian and the dollar. 
where it has definitely been outperforming. One of our major gains on the long-term account was precisely the USD JPY trading it into dollar weakness. Kiwi dollar has had a pretty good month, only rivaled by the Australian dollar. The US dollar, the clear loser in the last 30 day periods and silver and gold have been doing quite well in that same prior month. Uh, the week that just ended, we see the metals being very hard hit. So silver and gold gave up a, uh, a decent chunk of, um, of progress. So the week was down for the metals, but the month itself was up. The dollar continues being very low. Kiwi, yen, pound, euro, Swiss were the clear winners. And the Australian and the Canadian were also not bad, but not too good either. So it looks like the Canadian had not as bad a week as we would have expected. Um, it still managed to make gains over the metals and the dollar. And while it lost against the other currencies, it didn't lose that much. So we can see that lighter, not even red, but pinkish color on the, um, on the currencies and metals, uh, actually just currencies above the Canadian. Same applies to the Aussie, even though it did not make uh, inroads against uh, five currencies, the Euro, the Swiss, the pound, the Kiwi, the Yen, it didn't lose that much against them either. So that is our RSM for the past 30 and seven days. Moving on to the calendar for the week to come, we've got the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia's interest rate decision uh, Tuesday early morning. So that will be tomorrow night, half an hour after midnight tomorrow. Uh, we have uh, later on a Tuesday evening, the employment changes out of New Zealand. On Thursday, we have the Bank of England's interest rate decision, and we'll be keeping tabs on all these interest rate decisions to see if the uh, central banks jump the gun, which they have been doing in the last month or so, actually releasing their um, interest rate decisions as much as two days early in some cases. And last but not least, we have a double whammy on Friday with the non-farm payroll out of the U.S. and the similar labor numbers reporting out of Canada. So we will be trading those four, maybe five, uh, Friday being two of them at once. Uh, these five events will be traded live. Moving on to the charts, so we can see what I was mentioning about oil. It's finally started doing higher highs, higher lows. So it looks like it did make a bottom around $5 in the last couple of weeks. And it's now trying to work its way back up. Still very far from its prior price range, of course. It, uh, it had a complete breakdown. But it looks like it might be heading towards the $25 to $30 mark which is uh, where the Ichimoku cloud is right now might be heading towards that neighborhood <clears throat> again a lot depends on the reactivation of the global economy so that people actually start consuming oil gasoline and all the other byproducts in um in some fashion and start driving prices back up we have a glut in the oil market where the saudis and the russians are overproducing oil and of course, uh, to the complete collapse in prices as uh, the offer far outweighed the demand for oil and its byproducts thanks to the coronavirus situation. Moving on to the currencies, the euro dollar had a pretty good week. Uh, well, the euro had a pretty good week, uh, not the dollar. So the euro is gaining once again on the dollar. I do think we're going to have some opportunities to trade this pair up. Indeed, I already moved in that direction on at least one account. So we will see. I'm very eager to see how this week starts for the dollar pairs, in, in particular for the euro dollar. So I am bullish on this pair right now. <coughs> Sorry. Pound dollar, same thing. I, I do think the dollar is going to be a little bit stressed uh, in the next month or two, and we may see some good opportunities to trade these charts back towards the top. And apologies, my name seems to be frozen. There we go. USD JPY, uh, this one also moving significantly into dollar weakness and was the, um, was the biggest gain we had on the uh, long-term account in realized gains. And I have reopened that trade. So we're trading it once again down towards 100.
And not sure why my PowerPoint is so sluggish. I apologize for that. There we go. So USD CAD, it, again, the CAD is a very difficult animal to trade right now. It uh, does seem to be uh, a little bit um, indecisive. It's been going in both directions. This week in particular, we see that V shape, it, it collapsed completely the first day and pretty much back to where it started on Thursday and Friday. <clears throat> Moving back towards the top of the Ichimoku cloud, uh, this one is, um, I'm very, I'm as undecided on this pair as um, the two currencies seem to be right now. Both of them are weakening. Both of them have a poor outlook based on multiple uh, factors in the economy right now. So it literally could go in either direction quite easily. So I think I will be uh, taking a step back from the USD CAD until I see a breakout in either direction. USD Swiss moving back into dollar weakness with strength at long last. This one may give us an opportunity for a trade this week. We'll have to see how the market opens. Aussie dollar, I'm very bullish on the Aussie dollar. It did have a, a poor couple of days at the end of the week. We see that Thursday, Friday, it did give up some, not all of the uh, gains on the week. And this is another one I'm eagerly waiting to see what it's going to start doing as the week kicks off. Kiwi dollar, same thing, um, ended the week higher than it started, but it did have a significant retrace on Thursday, Friday. We are long on this pair, I think, on the long-term account, so no change to that. So long as that trend line holds, I think we're going to be trying to trade this up. Aussie CAD hit the very top of the chart. We uh, made some nice profit on the Aussie CAD over the past few months as we traded it back up. I still think that there's a good chance that it's going to break the top and keep going. We'll have to see if that actually happens. But for now, I am cautiously bullish on the Aussie CAD. Euro Swiss, we still have an open trade trading it down, which is almost exactly at break even. Uh, we had it uh, go against for most of the week. And then Thursday, Friday brought it back in line. Still waiting for that break um, on the bottom most level of support, a uh, sustained break that keeps it underneath that level. Hasn't been willing to give it to us for a while, but uh, it's still showing a lot of downward pressure. Euro pound, another one we are trading down and uh, we are carrying profit on uh, on the trades, or I think we took profit on the long term. Yeah, this was another one where we took profit on the long term earlier. And now we're, I think we're back in. If not, I probably will be jumping back in. I still am looking for the break of that trend line, just dissecting the chart near the bottom. I think that there is a very good opportunity of this one heading all the way to the bottom most level of support, and we will be attempting to trade it that way. Euro JPY, a stupendous retrace on Thursday, then complete indecision on Friday, probably giving us a good opportunity for 150 to 250 pips if it attacks the bottom most level of support again. So this is one where we're going to be looking for opportunity short-term and intermediate to trade in that direction. Euro-Canadian, same thing. It's, um, it's moving in both directions, mostly moving into Canadian weakness, which is odd because the euro is, uh, is quite stressed as well. Um, and, um, and the size of the economies are completely different. So in this one, from a fundamental perspective, I think we're going to have a good opportunity to trade it down as well, but that might not be immediate. So we have to wait for the right opportunity to come along. Pound JPY is still in a sideways channel, so we need to wait for that to break. And Pound Swiss uh, is also a little bit, um, well, I, I should say this one is definitely bullish, but it is showing a break right now. So we have to wait for that break to go in the opposite uh, direction. Um, so Aussie JPY, I'm sorry, I think I misspoke earlier. So Aussie JPY, I'm still very bullish on this pair. But again, have to wait for the, um, the current uh, retracement to end. Another one that's high on my radar as the week begins. Euro New Zealand, still more sideways than anything else. So with a bit of a bearish sentiment, it broke support, but then popped back up almost immediately hitting the underside of the trend line. Pound Canadian, still sideways in general. I think um, 
given what we know about the CAD, I think there's a very good chance of it breaking the top and continuing to, uh, to higher highs, but we have to wait for that to actually happen. And last but not least, Pound Swiss finally broke out of its sideways channel early in the week, only to end on Friday, popping back in. So I'm still bullish on this pair as well, but have to wait and see if it does continue to try to break towards the top. So another one that's on the radar, but uh, have to wait for it to actually do something significant. That is the end of our chart setup. We see in progress as the week begins, and this is um, probably boring you guys, but it is the reality of it. Everything happening right now is in regards or surrounding the situation with the coronavirus. We seem to be seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I saw multiple articles about vaccines starting to go into trials and uh, decreases in infection rate and death rate in multiple countries. So the situation may have peaked. It's really a little bit too soon to tell, but it does look like some optimism is coming back. Markets are never rational, so they tend to overblow these situations. We may see that even a hint of optimism means significant gains in the markets, uh, and even a hint of uh, pessimism is going to send the markets in the opposite direction. So we have to trade very carefully. Risk control, while well, it's always paramount, but even more so in situations like these, be very careful how we spread the risk around and take hedges at the same time we're opening likely trades. So more on that as we begin trading for the week. Uh, but for now, I still think this is um, a very good opportunity to make money uh, in times of chaos. Uh, prepared people often do much better than the rest of the population. So that's us, folks. And um, that's it. So a few words here in conclusion, and I try to just uh, bounce a few ideas here, whatever strikes my fancy the day of. But today I want to focus on setting goals. And uh, I, I see this a lot from people that are basically dabbling in one thing or another. So you have to figure out what you want from life. And of course, you have to develop a plan to get you there. And then last but not least, you have to implement it. I see a lot of people dipping their toes into the water and then looking for another bit of water, another body of water, and the next, but never actually committing to anything. And I, I did that for a long time. I tried many things out until I decided that trading was where I was going to focus. But nothing ever happened. Nothing improved until I actually did commit start doing things. So most of you listening to me are committed. You've been with me for quite a while. This message is really for everybody else out there. And there's nothing wrong with exploring options. I definitely did that for many years. But eventually, you need to have the discipline to follow through. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time, probably wasting everybody else's time. If you're not going to have the discipline to commit to doing something, then you better hope you can find a steady job working for somebody who is committed. Because that's what divides people in the world. The committed ones who get ahead, and even if they fail, at least they freaking tried. And the rest of the people who are just trying to make it day by day and never getting far. So your choice, you pick which ones you want to be. And that is the end of the presentation for today. Do I have any comments or questions from anyone? Okay, then thank you very much. Uh, we will be back again tomorrow night and uh, expect an email summary very shortly. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the weekend.